everyone, it's Ross, and I hope everyone's doing well. Um, today I want to show you guys a fig that is becoming um, my, one of my absolute favorites here for this climate. Um, it's productive. It's actually somewhat hardy. Um, it's very early, so it's one of four varieties that I have that's actually ripening main crop in July. Um, this one started about mid-July, and it's just awesome in the rain as well. So the combination between earliness, productivity, and it holds up to the rain is just an absolute winner in my climate. Um, so this, this fig also does really well all along the East Coast. It's very humid along the East Coast, or at least most parts of it. And then it also does really well in the Pacific Northwest, um, in England, or just a similar climate that's quite rainy, cold, short seasoned. Um, this is an absolute winner, and it's a you know subtropical fruit that's just going to perform really, really well. Um, it's called LSU Champagne, and Louisiana State University. I've I've done a video on this fig last year, I believe, but Louisiana State University is the one who who bred this fig. Um, they had a huge breeding program like 50 years ago. And they came out of that program uh, some pretty nice figs, and a lot of them have Celeste in their parentage, and so does LSU Champagne. Um, a lot of the LSU figs, like LSU Purple, LSU Tiger, uh, those are also really, really good figs. LSU O'Rourke, LSU Improved Celeste. So those are all, all five of those, I would consider them to be really, really good figs for this climate. And they're actually quite different from each other. LSU Champagne is a, if you've been following me along from the beginning of my, um, starting this year, you haven't seen much of my stuff from previous years, but uh, if you've been just now starting along, this is a fig that's a honey fig. This is not a, uh, a fig that I've shown you guys previously, whereas Azores Dark and Suwadi have both been some variation of a berry fig right that tastes like a berry this one and i'm going to show it to you guys and we're going to pick it here this one is yellow on the outside you can see it down here it's barely hanging on but it's also yellow on the inside as well and or amber on the inside and when you have a, a yellow amber interior that indicates it's a honey fig whereas if you have a red interior like my Suwadi does here. You can see I've got an organza bag on it. Or my Azores Dark. You know, that red interior indicates a berry flavor. So, um, this fig is a totally different fig from the other figs that I've been showing you guys. And um, this one's a real treat. And it's very different, like I've, I've been pointing out, it's very different from the other LSU figs. I mean, the closest one in flavor would be LSU Gold, but LSU Gold does not perform well here. It has a very open eye and doesn't. Um, here on my finger, here by the way, is honey. So I just touched the bottom of the fig at the eye. So let's pick it. At the eye is honey. This is a pretty nice characteristic of honey figs. This fig's barely hanging on, and you can tell this is a really good indicator that it's it's ready to go. Uh, these brown sugar spots, that's what that is. It's not rain. Um, that's a lot of sugar forming within this fig that's creating those spots. The amount of sweetness contained in this little fig here is insane. Um, just like all honey figs, they're way more sweet than your typical berry fig or your typical sugar fig. They are literally, and I know my girlfriend, my brother, you know, they, they don't, they understand that there's honey in here, but it's a nice distinction between, they like to make fun of me, but it's not exactly honey from a bee, right? Even though I think it's pretty similar to honey from a bee, but it's not as sweet. It's not as intense. It's, um maybe more of an agave honey. It's, for lack of a better word, a, a nectar that the fig produces. And you have lots of figs, not just honey figs, 
that will produce honey, even my Azores Dark, if you let it ripen long enough, which is what we're doing right now, we're, we're letting this one hang as long as possible, we're going to have honey at the eye on the Azores Dark, which is a really nice feature because you've got two different flavors in there. You have the berry plus the honey, right? So it's it's very interesting. I would describe I would describe my honey figs as more of a a melon undertone. So like all figs, there is a melon undertone that they all have is is what I like to describe as figgy, right? So the figgy melon undertone combined with lots of maybe some brown sugar and some honey that the fig naturally produces. So let's cut this one open and I'll, I'll show you guys exactly what I've been talking about. Put you guys down for just two seconds. I need two hands for this. Ideally I should have a serrated knife, but this is what I have in front of me. This thing's really ripe guys. This is insanely ripe. Um, I really like my figs very ripe because once you get them very ripe like this and I can tell it's super ripe because it's just hanging off the tree it's very soft you can feel a fig when you get more experienced and know just how how ripe it is um, but my personal preference is that I let them ripen as long as possible because you get the maximum maximum flavor you get the maximum sweetness I mean just like any fruit out there one day on the tree makes a huge difference and it's the same thing with figs especially so in this fig you can see that there's actually a lot of moisture in there now if I do that and show you guys the void of the fig there's definitely some pooled honey in there right that's the pooled nectar and I like to think that when the the fig will start leaking honey from the eye only when the interior is filled and it can't be filled anymore with honey that it kind of uh, excretes itself from the eye just as a, an escape an escape route <laughs> so that's kind of what you're looking at here it's just a very honey filled melon is what I would really describe this this fig as so let's taste it and again it's one of my most productive early reliable uh, pretty tasty figs out there so you know that I have and it just does so well with the moisture LSU champagne an absolute winner okay that's absurd all right that's a bit absurd <laughs> the amount of sweetness coming from that fig is insane oh man that's good Wow. Now, usually I give this fig an 8 out of 10. I actually like to pick this one a little earlier than I than I have. Um, that was pretty close to a 9. And I'm not going to give it a 9 simply for the fact that it doesn't have as much complexity as other figs. You know, like my Azores Dark, it has the berry flavor, which in itself is pretty complex. You know, this one I can easily break down and tell you exactly what it tastes like. It's a melon with honey on it. Whereas Azores Dark is really interesting, like most berry figs are. Plus, there is the honey component to Azores Dark. So I can't really give this one higher than a 9. Higher than an 8. So this one's an 8 out of 10. If I was a different person, though, if I was maybe someone from Europe, you know, people have different taste buds. People have different preferences. You may think this is your best fig. I mean, that was really well ripened, really tasty. You may have an opinion that says, all right, this is my favorite fig because it is of a different category, right? It is of a different flavor. Whereas maybe some people in other countries that have been growing up with figs their whole lives, this is more rare to them. And they don't prefer they don't prefer the berry figs so for me any honey fig is just gonna be a notch below any berry fig just like any sugar fig 
you know, something like a Celeste is going to be a notch below any berry fig. So it's really all a matter of preference. Um, but the most important thing I forgot to mention about this tree and how it performs, the really most interesting part is that the fig doesn't need to hang on the tree for very long, right? So the fig over here, here's another one ripening. This one just started to swell probably a day or two ago. And we only need about another day to three days for this to be perfectly ripe. When they start swelling, right? So 